What's up everybody? You know when you're hanging out in your van there are many ways to cover your windows. You can either cut out some Reflectix and stuff it in there or you could get some curtains or maybe get fancy with some leather and snap it into place and then every morning you just have to roll it up and strap it so it doesn't fall back down again. But since I am mega lazy I came up with a system that doesn't involve any of that. It's basically just a simple mini blind system. Just put it down that's all you got to do. And today, I'm going to give you a little behind the scenes on how I did it. Stay tuned. To install the blinds, I find it's easier to open the door first. That way you can get in here and roll the windows down. And then I slide the blinds in between the door and the car carefully. And the blinds have a slot in the top, that's just how they come, and it fits perfectly on these hooks that come with the car. So you don't have to use any screws or anything to attach it, it's not actually attached to the car. And when I fit this in place, you'll actually be able to hear it click. That's one. Okay, there's the other one. So now the blinds are actually hanging from those two hooks. But since it's kind of dangling loose, um, we have to find a way to get this to stay put. And so the way we did that, I have these little plastic tabs right there. Make sure you get a little closer view on it. It's um, it's just made from leftover scrap pieces of plastic I found and then I used a washer to hold it down. Real simple. Um, and that is going to fit into that little slot right here. This little slot is meant from the factory as a, it's just your, it's your window screen. In case you have people sitting there and they're being bothered by the sun. But I don't use that. Um, I do, however, use these little slots right here. And that is where these plastic tabs are going to fit into. Observe. Bam. It actually makes a satisfying click when it goes into place. There it goes. And so now those blinds are installed. So here's the thing, when I made these, I had no idea I was going to have a YouTube channel, nor did I think anybody would care to see video of me making these things. Heck, I didn't even know if these things were going to work at all. So unfortunately, there's no video of me actually manufacturing them. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, show you some behind the scenes of what, what they look like on the back side. And hopefully that is enough information. Maybe you can recreate these on your own. If there's not enough information, please feel free to leave questions or comments down below. So, on the back of this frame, uh, which is just a piece of material that's cut out and then covered in uh, fuzzy cloth. Um, and on the back of it are the blinds that I purchased from a home improvement store. They were almost the right size. I had to shave them just a little bit, but more importantly, the uh, inside corner, if you can see that, that has to be clipped off because of the shape of the car. If you don't have a Chrysler Pacifica, you might not have to cut that off. Um, so the, the biggest thing about these is the measuring. All the measurements have to be very accurate um, or else it's not gonna work. And once the blinds are installed, you can't shift it left or right. It has to be perfectly centered in order for this to drop um, naturally. And as far as the blinds go, as you can see, I had to cut out a part right here because part of the car goes right there. And that was probably one of the most difficult parts of this job because 
I'm using blinds that are made of these uh, this honeycomb material. I forget what that's called, but they're not actual individual louvers. It's all connected, but it's a three-dimensional object that moves a lot. So every time you try to cut this, if you're using scissors or knife or whatever you're using, unless you're using a lightsaber, you're not going to be able to cut this without the blinds moving. And when they move, as you cut it, you'll get the wrong measurement and you'll end up with big spaces like that or uh, too much blinds here. And it's just uh, it's very difficult. And I went through actually uh, two or three of these blinds before I, I got it right. And each one of these costs about $50. So, <laughs> that is why I don't plan to ever do this again. And then the blinds themselves are screwed to this, uh, the frame, just by um, little screws that go into here. And then uh, I covered the screws with a little, little square piece of cloth and glued that down on top of them so, so it doesn't look bad. And that's it. Um, I chose these blinds for many reasons, but one of them is because of this groove that runs along the top. That is actually where little hooks that are already in the car from the manufacturer will go to hold the, uh, hold the blinds up. And, uh, oops. and then I put um, <clears throat> these little plastic doohickeys just off some garbage that I had laying around. I just cut those out and um, used a washer to, to screw it down. And if these ever do get worn out, like I said, it's, it's just some piece of material I got out of the recycling bin. So any flexible piece of plastic will do. Um, the, uh, the frame itself is made out of, I forget what this is called, but it's some kind of uh, material that's supposed to go on your wall. Usually people make it go up so high and then they put border around it or something. I don't know. But it's, I don't even know if that's wood or press board or whatever that's made out of. But I got big sheets of this and then I cut the design out of it. This is a design that wasn't perfect um, to the point where I had to start over. So this is just scrap that I never got around to throwing away yet. But uh, once you cut that out, oh, here's, <laughs> here's a cardboard that I made to use as a template. It wasn't quite right because the window itself curves and this was a flat piece of material. So if you don't compensate for the curve, then it won't be perfect. And like I said, your measurements have to be accurate. But anyway, sorry Dexter. And then you can get this cloth at Walmart, really. But if you have like a Joanne Fabrics or something like that, or I think maybe even Hobby Lobby, it, it's, there's nothing special about it. It's just regular cloth. But I like it because it's a little bit fuzzy. And it reminds me of something that would be in a car. So I just use that to, uh, to cover this. It's being held down with uh, spray adhesive. I used, uh, what is that, 3M77 spray adhesive. Uh, not for any particular reason, I just use that because I found it in my garage. You know, no point in buying stuff if you don't have to. The finished product then looks something like this. And this is my first time doing something like this, so it's not perfect, but I'm not going to do it again. So on the other side you can see where it gets a little messy. Like I left some blank spots and then decided to uh, just patch those in. But when this is in the window, nobody's going to see that part except all of you. Uh, but anyway, that is it. That's how it's done. So if you have any uh, questions, please let me know. If you plan to make this yourself, uh, send me a message and I will do my best to help you and give you some tips and advice, but uh, it won't be easy. Good luck. And fortunately, pretty much every modern minivan comes with tinted side windows. I say that's fortunate because uh, it makes it harder to see these blinds. Harder, but not impossible. If you look close enough, you can still see them in there, but mostly the reflection blocks your view. And at nighttime, you can't see them at all. To uninstall the blinds, 
Open the door again, like before. Get in here and roll the window down. For that, it's just a simple matter of uh, unclicking the tabs from the bottom, and then unhooking the blinds from those two hooks, and it comes right out. Slide it out carefully from there, and you're done. Ha <laughs> ha.